Hi and welcome to this video on wildcard URL matching. This was actually a request from one of my um, one of my subscribers to just go through the wildcard URL matching and how that works within URL filtering. So that's what we're going to do. Um, so without any further ado, let's get started. Okay, so to give you an idea of what we're actually going to do, um, we're going to be using traffic that's running across this rule here the block URL categories rule. If we click into that, we can see that we are using the mode 44 filtering URL filtering profile. And if we go to objects and then URL filtering and then look at the mode 44 filtering profile, we can see here that we have blocked, got a block action for computing internet info. That's because we're going to do the testing mainly on Microsoft um, calls that the my desktop will make because they're the easiest to demonstrate and so uh, we've blocked it because it's all viewed as computer and internet info. Above this is a test no block URL category which is our custom URL categories and we've got alert on that. Remember again that anything that is um, allowed is allowed and there is no log for it. Anything that's on alert is allowed and then there's a log created for it. So if we go into our custom URL categories, which are here, and we have a look at our test node block, we've got a couple in here already, and we can start to look at what those, um, what the, the wildcards and, um, and what, what they mean in the trailing slash. Okay, I'm not going to bore you too much with uh, PowerPoints or Google Slides as it is. But basically, when we start looking at URL filtering, we need to realize that they're split into tokens and token separators. The token separators, for instance, in this URL are the dots, but they can be the slashes, they can be the ands or the question marks, the queries in a PHP query, and then the token is what's in between, and that's what we're matching. Are we matching one or are we matching multiples? A lot of times in URL filtering what you'll see is you'll see people using the asterisk as the wildcard, and that can lead to a lot more access than intended as, as seen here. Um, for instance, because that then matches everything. So the wildcard here would match www. It matched docs, but it would also match malicious. docs. mode forty four. co. uk, because that is anything up to that point. Carrots, on the other hand, uh, allow a single token to be matched. So the carrot in this case mode 44couk would match www dot and docs but it wouldn't match malicious dot docs because there's now two um, there's now two tokens behind that one you can have multiple wildcards multiple wildcards uh, are acceptable although they don't say to chain wildcards because it can create a huge overhead for processing um, we're not going to do this all on, on PowerPoint we're going to go and look at the firewall in a second so please bear with me um, but that will give you an idea there, so if we've got dot, carrot, dot, carrot, then we can have, after that one uh, token separator there, we can have a single token, co, and after that token separator we can have another single token, and again, so that would match co.uk, it also match co.jp. Um, in this particular instance, because we've got a wildcard at the start, it would match that, that whole, uh, whole URL at the bottom. The trailing slash, it actually says on there to add the trailing slash by best practice, and it is best practice, um, however, it is done by default, so if you don't put it in, the firewall will put it in anyway, which is to cut off this end part here. So if you were to have the trailing slash there, for instance, then that will only match .co. If there was no trailing slash there, then you would have .com, .commercial, .whatever you want at the end of it, it would match all those, so it would be a longer string match basically he's saying that's the end of the string okay so now we've gone that we'll go have a look at the firewall and and get off of the the, the powerpoint rubbish okay so as i say so we're going to be looking at um we're going to be looking at these microsoft calls because they happen very very regularly to see this is happening now and we can see that it's the block url that's what's happening and the rule is the block url categories which if we look at our rules here we can see that's our blocked URL categories, which is allowing everything, but it's got that simple URL filtering profile put in it. And what we want to do now is we want to put that self-events.data.microsoft.com. 
we want to put that in. Now there's a couple of ways we could do that. So if we come back to our panorama and we look, we can either add that as, so I'll just show you an easy way of doing it if you want to do it quickly. So if you click these, these three dots here, you can copy it from here. So if we wanted to add that in here as a single URL, so that would now match that self.events.data.microsoft.com. But we might not want to do that because there'll be others that we want to allow. So the way we could do that if we wanted to is we could add sorry carrot dot carrot dot carrot dot microsoft dot com okay and then we'll just remove that one and we can see that that'll actually match the same thing so I'll use that now I'll do that one now and then when we come back we should see in the logs that it will start to pick up that it will be allowed and it will be allowed because of this uh, because of this exception this put in all these sites we've put in to allow them okay so that's now that's that's done and that's working that's through now we can see that we've got an alert action here as opposed to a block URL we've still got the URL category list the URL category list basically tells us what categories this falls into uh, and additionally it, it actually gives us the order as well so the first one it dropped into is a test no block because this is um, so this is going to be evaluated from top down like a firewall rule base the next one was computer internet and info and then low risk so now because we've got the exception there on test no block that's the category it's matched on and so we're going to see that uh, we're going to see that it's going to be allowed it's, it's actually going to be alerted so it's allowed but alerted Okay, so that's doing it sort of that way. But if we were to look for then, um, give me a second. If we were to then look for, edge.microsoft.com, you can see that edge.microsoft.com is in the same computer internet info and low, low risk, um, but the category it's matching on is computer and internet info, and he's actually being blocked. So if we go back now and just put a wildcard in, if we were to take this out here, go behind there, take all that out, and put the wildcard in, and then we push that, and you'll see that both of those are now allowed. So both all the subdomains and the edge.microsoft.com is allowed. And that might be what you're looking to do. Um, anything from microsoft.com you might want to allow. Uh, but also, additionally, you might want to control it. Um, you might want to control it a lot, a lot more stringently than that. Okay, now that's pushed, and we can see that the edge.microsoft.com, which is now test no block, and that's what it's matched on, is being allowed as well as uh, FD API. I um, all being alerted now because of this test no block so that's because we that is because we changed this in here to the um, to the wildcard and again that means that everything that we matched from there backwards if you only wanted to match two so if you wanted to match two uh, two levels of um, Microsoft subdomain we could do that uh, or spell it right dot com uh, so we can do that as well and that only manage, manage the, the, the two it only allow the two so if we come back to here we can see so that would these would still be blocked that would be blocked as part from that but it would be allowed on the wild card you'd only get say data dot microsoft dot uh, events sorry dot data dot microsoft dot com so that's just a quick one on URL filtering um, remember the URL filtering profiles have to be attached to the um, they have to be attached to the rule for you to, to get the actions from it, even if that action is only alert. Um, if traffic goes across a rule that hasn't got URL filtering profile attached to it, then you'll not get URL filtering alerts or actions. Um, and I hope that clears up the wildcard thing.